What's up, everyone, and welcome to the RRBG podcast. Today, I'm being joined by a very special guest, WWE superstar, Karrion Cross. How are you, brother? I mean, physically, I'm doing very good. Mentally, I'm there, you know, despite what people would say. Spiritually, I probably need an exorcism, but we're not supposed to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was also a, a survivor of private schools and a lot of... Uh... <laughs> Uh, well, I'm sorry to hear that mentally you're, you know, you're working on it. I mean, that's something that I think we all share in this day and age. It's a, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of, uh... I mean, I feel good. You know, a lot of people say that I'm crazy, which I think is, uh, you know, it, that's not a fair assessment. I feel like I'm a product of my environments. I mean, look at what we're doing. We're hitting each other with chairs. I mean, it yeah. starts there. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of hits to the head and slams to the back and, a lot of stuff going on. I get it. I get it. But I mean, you must be feeling great after getting your um, your brown belt in jujitsu. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's one of the things I, I you know, one of the reasons why I follow your career and and, and I'm a big fan is that, you know, you, you actually put in work uh, in my number one sport, which is MMA and jujitsu and whatnot, and, and bring it into the ring for uh, your you know, for what you're doing in WWE, which is also amazing. Uh, I do want, wish you would go back to Killer Cross, like your your IG handle, though. I get that a lot. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, 24 years to get my brown belt, no big deal. No, no big, big deal. deal. It's easy. Anybody can do it. What? I mean, you watch <laughs> UFC. I mean, look how easy it is that. I mean, um, but yeah, it's uh, I did 20 years, believe it or not, in Nogi, and um, I was just a raised uh, in an environment uh, with the proponent of uh, just know how to do it if the guy is not wearing a jacket. Mm. And uh, when I actually moved to Orlando uh, to join NXT back in 2020, I found a Gracie Jiu Jitsu school, it was Gracie Baja. And I wanted to go to the most legit school that I could possibly find at the time in Orlando. And that, you know, if Gracie's on it, then you can you can trust it. That, that has yeah. to go through as they get vetted, right? And they were offering gi like five days a week and i thought it would be super responsible for me to start doing kickboxing sparring and stuff like that because you can get a concussion anytime you're sparring you know what i mean like if you're going with solid people it just seemed irresponsible to start doing that once i joined nxt so i had no choice but to get in the gi and i totally fell in love with it so yeah total of 24 years catch wrestling jits judo i finally got it and um uh super super happy about that as far as the killer cross thing um you know never say never there could be a day where you know the powers that be decide let's turn the volume on uh, you know let's turn the volume up on that so let's let's bring that back but it's more of a vibe than anything it's not just the name and uh if uh the handcuffs come off i will show you guys things that you cannot unsee <laughs> well, I mean, it does seem like things are changing. I don't want to talk too much work. I want to get into some music stuff with you, some mental health stuff with you. But just to kind of touch on it, I mean, things are looking a little different. I just saw that Shayna got announced for Bloodsport, and, you know, that's huge because I think you've done it before your time in WWE, right? You did Bloodsport, I think, one or two or three, one of the early ones. Yes. Uh, first one was with uh, Bulldog's son, Harry. Yeah, uh, which is awesome. A lot of people had no idea that I had a shoot background. So being able to show some range to the audience and demonstrate that I had that background, honestly, uh, it, it put my equity in the eyes of the audience to the roof. It completely changed the entire trajectory of my career and the way fans took to me. Um, and then I uh, competed against Nick Gage in the next one, which was a lot of fun. He has a street fighting background. So, you know, he's not like a martial artist. So right. it was fun to be able to get with him and put that together, like what that should look like. Um, and I'm very happy for Shana. She's going to kill it. And that is, I mean, WWE is her environment, but blood sport is really, really her environment. Yeah. So she's a student of Barnett. I mean, it's, it make it's made sense to me in my head for years for her to be in there. Uh, and you know, like, like the whole point was things are changing and I feel like this is a new era where, something like that can happen and it's exciting it's exciting as a fan and and a, you know as a friend of barnett's like i just it's cool that that they're, everybody's working together like that oh yeah i love it yeah, yeah man. uh okay so also i have a, a bone to pick with you mister <laughs> as a as a follically challenged man 
I always thought when I first saw you, I'm like, oh, I can relate to him. He's bald. And then you grew all your hair out. And I'm like, wait, he's a fraud. <laughs> he can grow hair. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm upset that you can actually grow hair and, and that you were fooling me for years with the bald head. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you this. I mean, that was your profound moment of realization. Let me tell you about mine, brother. Um, hair is uh, a lot to take care of. Yes. And uh, I'm enjoying having hair. I'm actually loving it. But, um, you know, I never knew I was part of some supportive bald community when I was bald. <laughs> All of a sudden, <laughs> you guys showed up when I wasn't bald anymore. So you could take your brevity and you could shove it, you know, where. <laughs> it's trouble i gotta can't curse and use foul language we were all warned pg but um i find it hilarious and you know what i was just very dedicated to a very particular presentation of the character i was very big at the time on the movie bronson with tom hardy and Great i drew movie. a lot of inspiration on the real guy yeah and the movie itself and i just thought at that time uh, the aesthetic pre presentation would look good with um with a bald thing. And yeah, I've always been able to grow hair. No one is bald on either side of my family. Nobody. Gosh, it's upsetting. Speaking of Bronson, that's actually the name of my, my dog. I named him after the movie. Not, and everybody's like, Oh, after Charles Bronson. I'm like, what are you 60? No, Bronson. The Tom, <laughs> Tom Hardy movie. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. I just, I needed to bring that up. Cause it's my wife even brings it up. She's like, I liked him more with the shaved head. I'm like, well, <laughs> tell her you're not supposed to like me. I mean, I'm out here trying to get heat for God's sake. That's true. That's true. That is true. <laughs> Give me all the heat. I have an attractive wife. <laughs> I can beat you up. And I have long hair. Hate me. Yeah. And you got these two big dudes following you now that can kick anyone's ass. Like, I don't know what's, you know, like, what more do you need? Start setting fire in, uh, to the ring. And, and whenever you walk out there, just burn it down. Okay. So let's talk music. I know you're a big music guy. Um, actually, you know, found this out through a buddy of mine, Rain and Bozio. I, you know, I have to mention him. He's uh, Terry Bozio's kid. And he was like, oh, yeah, he's a big fan of, uh, of, of metal and music. And also you can tell by the presentation, by the way you look, the tattoos, the whole thing. You know, you're one of our, our kin. But uh, I wanted to ask you straight out, you know, what do you think is the importance of having music in your life every day? Because I know people that I've talked to and they're like, ah. I don't really listen to music. I'm like, are you dead inside? How is that possible? <laughs> you're not from Earth. Sorry, you're an android or a holographic vampire. You're not human. Get away from yeah. me. <laughs> like, you could like specific genres, but no music? <laughs> That's weird. No. That is a dog hiding inside a human costume or something. I don't understand. <laughs> not human. Um, but yeah, uh, love music. Uh, um, and... Uh, I mean, I, I heard a quote once, and I think it applies to everybody and everything. Uh, music is the soundtrack of our lives. How can you not love music, you know? I think it's, it's imperative. It's imperative to everything. I mean, sometimes it could, you know, exacerbate your mood uh, in a positive way or a negative way. It can get you motivated. I know when I'm doing long-distance cardio, there's only so much coffee you can drink before you have a heart attack. So you have to monitor your caffeine intake. And when I'm ready to hang it up and I, I still have more time to go, if that right song comes on, that particular song, I've got another 30 minutes in me, whereas I was right about to just quit. Music can change you, man, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I use it also for the timing. Like, um, you know, it's important to keep your breathing regulated obviously when you're running or doing something like that and you know just the, the four by four just the click track just the, it's something to keep me in rhythm so i could be like all right in breathe in four counts breathe out four counts whatever that may be you know uh so okay tell me what song what's that song because you said if the right song clicks in what are some of those songs for you um anything off of reload uh by metallica really yeah, I just listen. We can. That's a we controversial can take, buddy. I know we can get in fights about how Bob Rock ruined Metallica, <laughs> bro. When when he told you that I'm into music, I mean he wasn't kidding. I really follow who produced the album, record labels. I really, really am into music. I used to when I was little, and I used to get the Metallica albums. I would look at who wrote the songs. Mm -hmm. I don't. Everyone downloads everything off of iTunes, which is wonderful. But when I was little and we didn't have iTunes, and we just had the CDs. They used to write in the literature uh, who used to write them, 
um, which people in the band were responsible for the songs, the year it came out, like, you know, like I, I was deep, deep, deep into that. And I loved Kill Em All. I love Ride the Lightning. I love Master of Puppets. I love Injustice for All. Yes, I love the Black Album, Kill Me. And I loved Load and Reload. And no one's going to be able to take that away from me. When a good Reload song comes on, you know, like, I'm in. Anything off that album. And honestly, anything off Ride the Lightning, too. Mm -hmm. So any of those songs come on my random playlist, I'll run through a wall. <laughs> That's interesting, man. That's such a hot take for 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 metalheads. I know a lot of people give it a lot of hate uh, for load and reload. I mean, every, when they shave their heads, it, it all went to shit. Apparently, so uh, I, I don't know. I'm not a big. Uh, I'm not a big. I don't hate anymore. I used to when I was younger. Me too. Elitist in terms of of what I'm listening to. Like, oh, you listen to that garbage. Uh, but you I know. went through a small phase of that as too. It's like er early tribalism in music. You want to like lean into the communities when you're younger, trying to find your identity, you know, of like what aligns with how you feel and what you like. And then as you get older, like, oh, this is all ridiculous. <laughs> like I, I used to be like that too. Like, oh, you listen to anything on the radio. I only listen to Behemoth and Cannibal Corpse. That's real music. You know, like I went through all that when I was little for like a short period. But I mean, I, I love it all. All right, all right. Now you mentioned Behemoth and Cam. Do you still listen to them as well, or do you? Are you I'm kind of? You. Okay. Let right. there be might. Hammer smashed face. Oof. Don't even get me started. Scourge I'll of Iron. Right now. <laughs> Scourge of Iron is my go-to like uh, deadlift song. <laughs> that's a good wrestling. Theme. Scourge of Iron. Yeah, that's a good faction. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so what? Are, name me some other. What are your top five? And like, if you were to do a Mount Rushmore of metal, uh, oh, such a loaded question. This I is know. good heat, though. Good heat, because no answer will be the right answer. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, a Mount Rushmore in no particular order. How many are we talking about? Four or five? Yeah, we'll do four and an honorable mention, because I think Mount Rushmore is only four, right? So yeah, we'll do four and an honorable mention. <laughs> Okay, well, sorry, everybody. Metallica is going up there. Okay, okay. okay. Hey. Um, I'm going to say uh, this is my Mount Rushmore. This is not the Mount Rushmore that I'm imposing on everybody, so calm down. Don't get hot. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put Emperor up there without a doubt. Um, you know what? Um, I think I got to put Mayhem up there as well. And Metallica is going to be the least of them all uh, in terms of how heavy it's going to be. Mm. Such a loaded question. I I want to put up I want to put up Arch Enemy. Really? Okay, that was a surprising choice. I like yeah. them. I'm not not talking trash. I'm just surprised. I'll hit you with a chair, bro. I mean, I I'll, I will find you with a chair. All right, <laughs> your condescending tone. <laughs> I like them. I saw them. I forget who I saw them with. Uh, I was doing photos for some reason. Every once in a while, PR people give me photo passes and they're like, here, take pictures. I'm like, but I'm not a photographer. But uh, but I like being right up in the action. So, well, let's go. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I could have said Black Throne. I could have said Corpse. I, there's a million bands. That could, I could have said Dying Fetus. Mm. Yeah, I know. You know, crucify me. Come get me. All right. Are you of the frame of mind that that kind of metal like the death metal the black metal needs to sound like crap because a lot of people you know they get upset when some of these bands get high production value in their albums they want it to sound crappy are you of that mindset or do you you want people to sound clean and you know or at least well produced i want the people in the band to be able to produce the music that they have in their hearts and if that means that it's going to be produced through a garage or it's going to be produced through a multi-million dollar studio, then that's how it should sound. And mm. I think that like, like we were talking about when you're young, you have all of these ideas and these um, constructs of how things are supposed to be and how they're supposed to sound. You don't even realize you're not even self-aware enough to know that like, this is just your preference and you're projecting it. You don't even mean to be. And like, mm. as, as an artist myself, I like to paint. I do occasionally write music um, and you know, I'm involved in a performance art for a living. Um, like I understand the importance of being able to get this thing out of here and here and, and present that to people so they can enjoy it. And 
that's like a subjective thing to me. I think art is subjective and I think anyone can enjoy anything if that's really what they enjoy. That's a good way of being. That's a very non-heat answer. <laughs> I know I'll work on it. I, I, I should have said something really rotten. No, know? it's a, it's a good, it's a good way of living, man. It's that's how I've been living the last, I would say 10, 15 years since I've been trying to change my, my ways of being this gatekeepy elitist type of like, no, you can't listen to Nickelback. Like, no, you know what, man, they're doing something, right? They're selling millions of records, whatever. I, I don't, it's not for me, but it's obviously for millions of people. Sure. Yeah, you know? Um, okay. You mentioned you write music. So which instruments can you play? I'm self-taught on a seven string guitar. I was so in love with metal. Metal was like my life as a teenager that I was like, I've got all this free time on my hands and I have to stop working out or I'm going to overtrain and get hurt. So I need a new, I need a new hobby. Mm -hmm. So I uh, went out and bought uh, a seven string. Um, oh, it's been so long. What was it? It started with a W. It was the only seven string guitar I bought. I bought three other six strings. Warwick? After. Uh, no. It'll come back to me by the end of this. But um, I bought a seven string, taught myself how to play on that, just listening and watching videos and understanding the fretboard and, you know, how to get noise and sound out of it, the universal laws of uh, stringed instruments. <laughs> um, even watching stuff like with people playing cello and bass, and it helps you have a, a comprehension of how to actually get the desired, you know, tones and stuff out of guitar. Um, I honestly now, when I'm home, I play on a six-string Ibanez I had a seven string Washburn. That's what it was. I had to say I've been say Washburn. That's all it was. But yeah, um, and yeah, I'm like very, very casual on it. I'm not consistently playing, but when I do pick it up, I'll play the entire day until my fingers are bleeding. So it's just how it looks. Yeah, that's how you got to do it. Uh, there's a, there's been other there's like video games out there that teach people how to play. Have you ever tried any of like I think uh, get, not Guitar Hero, obviously, but like uh, I think it's Guitar Smith. There's a game where it's actually like a learning thing. It's not just a game game. When I broke my shoulder, my wife um, basically taught me how to download a video game on my phone because I, I couldn't work out, work out the way I wanted to. I was doing physio, but um, she thought it would be good for me, which it was, to start playing again. Um, and it was like a very, very short range uh, exercise repetition for my shoulder, my elbow, and my hand to work together again. Um, and yeah, she showed me that. It was really cool. Teaches it's, you to. I think uh, it's called Rocksmith on. now. Rocksmith, I think, is what yeah. it's called. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, have you thought about recording? Like, do you want? Is that something that's in the back of your head? Like, you know, one day I'm going to put out an album. I've I've really seriously thought about it, but I'll, I'll shoot straight with you. Honestly, I wrestling is such a is such a passion for me that I. And I have a hard, I have such a hard time getting away from it. I love doing it so much. I love thinking about it and constructing ideas to bring to life and entertain people with it really kind of just takes over some of these other interests that I have, like even jujitsu and stuff like that. I like having them and I keep them fresh and you never know when an opportunity can come up in life from a music studio or a film where they ask you if you can play. And if you can say yes, and you can demonstrate that you can play these, these tools come in handy for other opportunities, but I have. I have seriously thought about um, maybe doing a record, um, but I haven't played with a band since I've been 17. And I don't think it would be hard, like I'm sure, a full day somewhere with a group of people that, you know, I jive with. I could very easily and quickly probably write music. Hmm. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's important to have different things because, uh, you know, wrestling, you want to do it as long as you can, but eventually i mean it's a very physical thing and and eventually the day will come when you cannot and it's good to have something else because you know that's how you get the darren aronofsky movie the wrestler where like i don't know what to do with my life but you know they gotta Dude, stick to it when i was in the indies i was sitting next to some of the people from the old garden i love them but it freaked me out so i know exactly what you mean it's you know they, they didn't look well so i get it i'm always thinking about the future and I have my hands uh, in a lot of different things outside wrestling that I just got to keep to myself. So, okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, it's not just and not just wrestling, but MMA too. Like, I mean, you see, back in the day when when Chuck Liddell was trying to hang on to his 
you know, glory days. And I'm like, dude, just stop. You're getting knocked out every fight. You got to stop. <laughs> that broke my heart. The Keith Jardine fight, I'll never forget. Um, when he fought Rashad and Rashad hit him with that overhand. Oh. I was like, holy cow, man. Uh, who I got him as well, Mauricio. I remember all that. Yeah, man. I, I'm a big fan of MMA, but I've honestly intentionally pulled myself away a little bit because I would get so behind some of these these athletes. And then when the day eventually comes, because it comes for all of them, uh, that they get knocked out and then it just starts like a decline. And it's very de it's depressing. You know, <laughs> like I'm, I was a big fan of Machida. You know, I was uh, wearing the shirts like ah, it's the era of the dragon. And then, you know, then started going down. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, this is, you know, I forget that they're human. Uh, Anderson Silva, another one that was, like, undefeated forever, and then the day came. Yeah, yeah man. Part of the part of the deal is, you know, going out on your shield for yeah. 99 Part of yeah. the deal. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on AI-generated music? Mm, I, I'm of two minds about the subject. So... For one, I think it's cool that there's an industry out there where people can, you know, make a living and have an income, you know, sort of creating software that creates music for people to enjoy. I think that's cool. I think it's it's interesting. Uh, to me, it still is a form of art. Um, but on the other hand, uh, if it becomes a thing that is going to take jobs away from people and it makes it more difficult um for people to enjoy art. I mean, I don't know. We're so early in the beginning of it. It's hard to anticipate what direction um, all that's going to go in. But I think it's kind of cool. I don't hate it. Um, but I, I hope it doesn't put people in the wrong direction. All the AI stuff is a bit, um, I don't know. It's a little, it's still odd to me because we're, we're the generation living through it first, right? So it's still very, the idea of it, the concept is a little foreign. Yeah, I mean, we're a pretty interesting generation, I think. I'm, we're a similar age, I think. I might be a year or two older, I'm not sure. Uh, but we saw the internet come to life. We, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't have internet my whole life. It was many years of nothing, just cell phones. And even that was like a giant brick. So it, it, to see the birth of the internet to now where we're seeing the birth of AI. I mean, that's nobody else has ever had to go through that. Yeah. It's been pretty weird. <laughs> yeah. it's been pretty weird. Thinking about the way the world was when you were a child, uh, that world is like, that world is gone. It's actually gone. Um, going outside and playing outside the entire day with no worries. That's, that's done. Yeah. Yeah, because now it's like, oh, what, what's out there? And what if there's broken glass? And what if somebody, you know, takes the child? Or like, you know, there's so many other things that we're aware of. And I think, honestly, maybe all of those things were there when we were younger, but they weren't, uh, we weren't so informed. I think we're just more informed now. Like, we have all the yeah. information. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. yeah, like, that's another thing. Having all of the info, like... When I was a child, I had to figure things out. I had to go find a book. I had to go to the library. I had to, you know, now all of any question that a child could possibly have, they just pull up their phone and the answer's there. It's yeah. wild. <laughs> I don't know how to summarize it, but there is a, you know, the best way I could do it is what people are subjected to is kind of what forms who they become. And I think it's unfair for a person, not you, but a person to make a generalizing statement saying that we're going to have... Uh, a generation that's not as strong as the previous generations because they're growing up on all their phones and their internet and stuff like that. Not that you even suggested that at all, but I hear that mm -hmm. argument a lot. And, you know, maybe there's some merit to it, but maybe there's not because I think people are going to be far more intelligent um, now than when they were when we didn't have the internet because um, you'd have to go to a library and you'd have to read through and find the right books to understand and retain that information. Now you have a library in your pocket, which is, which is pretty cool. But I am glad I grew up when I grew up. But things were more simple. So you can make more mistakes and, and learn from your mistakes. Now you make a mistake and it's broadcasted and people, you know, get traumatized by stuff like that. And they, yeah, they, turn it in, it. they turn it into a TikTok and, and it's, it goes right. viral. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I came up with TikTok before that app did. I just want to throw that out there. Oh, what happened? Did you get? I, I've had ideas stolen from me by the 
universe and the ether. Uh, what happened? How did you? What did you have in mind? <laughs> you know, I just had this character concept: a guy morbidly obsessed with uh, obsessed with time. And you know, we started there, and then this app came along, and they took the C out of TikTok, and it was T O K. And I was like, "What the oh, hell?" Oh, I see. I see. I what see. What the hell is that? And they were like, "You should get a TikTok." And I said, "I'm absolutely not going to get a TikTok. Just out of spite. Okay, there'll be no TikTok for me." <laughs> Just open up a TikTok and just have it be of every day. Post a video of the words TikTok, just every day. Just see if that works. It's a social experiment. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> now to go to go back a little bit on what we were just saying. Like you know, uh, I'm with you on that, and I'm also I'm in a weird in between space with that. In, like I I do believe that the generation now is more intelligent. They have more information, also more empathetic, more understanding of of hey, there are other people in other places that think completely different to me. And I didn't know that, but I saw this video and now I know, and we didn't have the, that kind of uh, privilege back in the day. We, we no. just assumed everybody in our bubble, well, that's how the world is. And we don't realize that there's other cultures and other countries and everything like that. Uh, so I do think more empathetic, more intelligent, but it, it's a weird thing. Like in my mind, I believe we should regulate it so that we don't, create uh, or foster a, a lazy kind of generation but I'm also kind of a punk rocker and a metalhead and I don't think we should regulate anything <laughs> I know I'm so I'm, I'm so anti-establishment too and I can't get rid of it that's the that's the price of being born in 85 <laughs> that's punk rock I, it is so okay take me back uh, young young killer young <laughs> young killer young killer Young Carrion, Young Cross, uh, when you were small, what was one of the first bands that you remember listening to? Guns and Roses. Guns and Roses, okay. Yep. Were your parents uh, ever trying to stop you? Like, don't listen to that. That's the devil's music. Or, uh, or were they supportive? Were they metalheads too? Never. Um, they liked all music. Uh, they liked rock and roll. They liked more music than I did. Um, I never had... Um, them try to take something away from me. There was there was uh, one album that I got. It was Use Your Illusions 2. And they were like, before you listen to this, because I wanted to get it because it's a song from Terminator 2 on it, You Could Be Mine. Oh, that's such a good song. <laughs> yeah, when Connor is on the little dirt bike. And then um, they read the lyrics out of one song, and they were like, we're going to wait. We're, you'd have to look up the album and to see. I, we can't, I can't even tell you what the lyrics are on this. I'll get in so much trouble. But there's lyrics on one particular song, um, and uh, they were like, we're going to wait like a year or two to give you this album. We're so sorry. <laughs> They're like, you'll understand when you're older. And I laugh about it now because, like, the lyrics on one particular song in there were, <laughs> were not for a little kid. <laughs> and they didn't make the album for a little kid, but they had a really good song on it. So what are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, you know, that is one of those. I don't, I, I'm assuming you, you followed the rules and didn't listen to it for a couple of years, but... I was very rebellious, and every time my family would be like, "Don't listen to that. That uh, that's the first thing I'm listening to, dude." Sorry. Oh, <laughs> I remember my my uh, my young my young uncle having the Two Live Crew, which none of those songs are appropriate. Um, <laughs> but I remember them like, "Don't listen to that," and I ran out there. The first time I could ever purchase music on my own with my own money, I bought that. I bought Nine Inch Nails. I bought Marilyn Manson, which I was told, don't listen to that because you'll turn into a devil. Uh, like yeah. there's you know, so many things. Um, but I don't know. What it, what what do you think it is about people like you and I that listen to metal and, and are a little bit rebellious like that, where if you tell us, don't do that, we gonna, we're going to go try it? Um, this is one of those questions that I think um, for our particular generation, at least speaking on behalf of all of us. <laughs> I think this is one of those questions that will take us a long time to answer because if you think about it you know how we were joking around how we were tribal with our music when we were really really young right now as you and i are talking as we are presently we may still be tribal about things and we don't even realize it you know we get more self-aware as we get older not everybody does unfortunately some people just remain 14 for the rest of their lives and i try to stay away from those people as as far away as possible <laughs> But um, there, you know, it, hopefully in your own personal development, these things become clear as you begin to see yourself and other people. And I think 
I don't know how to answer your question right now, but I, I have a very good feeling that I'm going to be able to answer that as I get older. Because there have been these questions and these things that I can address right now that I would never be able to get near in my early 20s or my teens. But just the funny thing is you change and develop and have life experiences. As you get older, you're like, oh, that's why. That's why this was like that. And that's why I thought about it like this. I didn't know. So hard, hard to say. But I think the intention of what parents always have when they're trying to take something away from their kids is they're trying to be accountable and responsible for not subjecting their kids to things that will put them in the wrong direction. And they're going to be overprotective. That's their nature. So they may, you know, take an album or, or some music away from them that may have not put them in the wrong direction at all. But, you know, in that moment, it was done with compassion and empathy. But maybe they didn't have to. And that's something that you figure out over the course of life, I think. Yeah. Maturity, I think it helps growing up, getting going through your own things. Uh, but yeah, my, my parents were very strict growing up. Like I said, I grew in a uh, you know private school and getting hit by, with a ruler by the nuns. Like, so I think that uh, upbringing probably helped me kind of like if my parents think I should come to this school and get hit by rulers, then they they probably don't know what they're talking about. So I'm not going to listen to that. <laughs> Well, maybe I should have been hit by rulers. Then I wouldn't have grown up to be hit with chairs. I mean, who knows how this could have turned out? Or you, I don't know, maybe you'd be a deathmatch wrestler. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I only want chairs and, and glass and all that stuff. Who um, knows? To go back a little bit to about, you were mentioning CDs. Do you collect vinyl? I do. And uh, this is just a recent thing over the last two years. My wife for Christmas present, um, she got me an electronic record player mm. and pretty awesome right now. Uh, we've only been picking up best of albums like, uh, Elvis Sinatra. Um, I actually, she got me Meridonomes by a perfect circle, which is my favorite band. I have it on record and 13th step. Uh, we've seen them live. It's her favorite live band aside from Chelsea Wolf. And, nice. um, yeah, like just in terms of live performances, so that's the stuff we've been picking up. And I do have a Corpse album, but I don't remember which album it is. I have that on vinyl, which is so cool. Um, I got a the new Motorhead record that came out that they released for Christmas. Uh, and I got the Motorhead shirt, too, with the Santa Claus hat on it. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. You're not allowed to talk too much about Motorhead or wear Motorhead stuff because the boys will tease you. Be like, oh, he's trying to pander to Hunter. It's like, no, I really, really <laughs> did like them. I really have liked them. You know? I really like Motorhead, guys. Come on. <laughs> no, I get that. I get that. 78 Overkill album. That was, man. I remember when I accidentally found Motorhead in a record store um, when I was looking up the Mortal. I was trying to find Metallica and the Mortal Kombat soundtrack when I was little because Typo Negative and uh, who else was on the Mortal Kombat soundtrack, if you guys don't know, had some of the best bands on it. And it had a ton of people. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, Fear Factory. Mm. Had a, a, dude, there was a bunch of, anyways, I find the section Motorhead. I go, what's that? And I look up, sure enough, it's a black and white album cover with the with the emblem on it. And I was like, that looks cool. Put it on and it just blew my mind. Cat Scratch Fever when I was little and all that stuff, dude. It was good. I miss the days of good soundtracks. We don't have that much anymore. I mean, there are good composers doing incredible scores and whatnot, but those days of like the Crow soundtrack or, you know, Mortal Kombat or uh, Judgment Day, you know, like th those are, I mean, not the faction, um, the, the movie. <laughs> uh, but, yep. you know, those days, I don't really see that much anymore with movies where the soundtrack kind of lives on its own even like people are just rocking the soundtrack and they haven't even seen the movie i know i've noticed <laughs> yeah um so going back heat statement perfect circle over tool for me yes okay. fight me fight me <laughs> fight me, please okay okay I, I love perfect circle i'm just i'm josh and i love anything maynard does unfortunately i'm, I'm hooked for life uh but that, that is, you know, a lot of people will give you heat for picking Perfect Circle over Tool. And then I will strangle them very easily and break <laughs> arms. So that's, that's man, I love that. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, violence doesn't solve anything. And it's like, well, have you ever been choked out? <laughs> <laughs> it solves a lot oh, yeah. of things. 
True. A lot of a lot of my friends, my closest friends, I've been in a fight with because we learned to respect each other after that. You know, yep. it's actually a, a, a it's a line from a perfect not perfect circle. Sorry, Pussifer, uh, which is yep. also Maynard's band, but he has yes. a line like, "You look like you, you you need to be slapped in your effing mouth." Uh, yep. You know, because people just talk sometimes and. That's one thing I don't like about the UFC is that it's given people, a lot of people, this confidence that they think they can, you know, win a fight just because they watched of all the pay-per-views, you know, like, no, oh, you got to train. <laughs> we see it all the time. I've been watching this happen for over two decades training martial arts. Some guy walks into the gym and he's like, yeah, I've been in 2000 street fights. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm a, you know, I'm black belt, but I forgot it today. Who's the toughest guy in here? You know, these people that come into the schools all the time that are like, they think they're nuts and telling you all these stories. Like once you get on the mats or you get in the ring, like what you're able to do, you know, cannot lie on your behalf. And those people that, you know, do all the online talking and all of that type of stuff, they try their hand. I've seen, I've seen it. I've seen it for years. People getting choked out, you know, choked out and peeing themselves. Like <laughs> I, I just, it's gotten worse uh, as I've gotten older, farther away from, you know, the generation where people would throw hands. And I'm not condoning that as saying it's the best way to go about things. It's obviously not. But no. I have noticed there is an uptake in really delusional people that, um, you know, they've become like they're living vicariously through the combat athletes on TV. And they carry themselves in such a way that they're, they're not able to like, pack that up. So yeah. hopefully we grow out of that soon. I, I feel like we will. So yeah, as more and more people walk into the gyms and get choked out, uh, I think the word will spread. <laughs> yeah, we're doing the Lord's work, guys. <laughs> yeah, I've, I, 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 you can also tell when you're face to face with someone and there's like a, some kind of conflict. You can always tell when that person is trained or or, yeah. or disciplined because normally they're the ones not trying to fight. Of course, you, you know, you tell by. <laughs> composure and it's not something you can fake you know my favorite is when guys used to come into the gym and you know they're com claiming claiming their black belts and they have the uniform and the black belt but i can just kind of look and i can tell that the uniform of the black belt's literally never been washed and like it's like fresh like you just bought it and put it on like if, if you're someone who's been doing this for a long time you have to wash your uniform you have to you have to wash your belt your people have no idea how much you sweat when you're training hard and they come in with their fresh little outfits i'm just like <laughs> this guy has no idea he's not scaring us and he's not intimidating us he's actually putting himself in danger because they're going to have him roll with other black belts and the black belts are going to roll with him like a black belt and they might pull his head off his body yeah. like it's just a different level that you're participating you know at with things so yeah that's a whole yeah. other rabbit yeah, I mean, I've I've had a couple confrontations. I used to be a process server, so I would have to like, you know, knock on people's doors and give them bad news, which usually results in violence. And yeah. um, my wife would give me stuff to, you know, one time she was there and the dudes in my face, threatening, and I'm calm as cucumber, just sitting, standing there like, go for it. And she was like, why are you trying? Why are you telling him to go for it? I'm like, because he's not gonna go for it. <laughs> he doesn't have anything to bring to the table there's no reason to get upset uh but I, I that's one reason why i love mma and and just combat sports in general because it does teach you that respect the discipline the calmness like yeah you look like you look like a killer but i know that if you and i were to get get into a disagreement you wouldn't just start yelling in my face like i'm gonna kill you you know you would unless friday unless it was friday if it was friday i might that's true. If it's uh, if there's cameras on, that's a different story. Because <laughs> yeah. then that that goes to your TikTok. Um. Anyway, mo <laughs> right. all right. Uh, let, I want to start wrapping it soon. I want to take too much of your time. I know you're busy as hell. But oh, I'm uh, back to jail. It's over. So, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, fair warning, Mister. I just started getting into records. It will ruin your life. <laughs> just giving you a I'm warning. Ready. I'm ready for it. Things are too perfect. I've got things too good. You know, that's what we need. We need to throw a wrench into this whole thing. It's wild, man. I, I started, you know, like, oh, yeah, let me collect, the, you know, my favorite bands. And then it just like it's just start. now I have 600 vinyl records in my place. And uh, if there's ever some kind of natural disaster or emergency, it's all burning down. How am I going to carry 600 vinyl records anywhere? <laughs> that's awesome. 
Uh, but there is a very cool Mortal Kombat soundtrack on vinyl with really cool splatter artwork and stuff. It can get uh, it can get deep. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Um, okay. When you're having a particularly low mental day, let's say you woke up, you're not feeling great, you're in a funk. Are there? Do you have? And if you don't have, what are some that would be there? A playlist to cheer you up. Hmm. Well, uh, this may surprise people. Um, the guy on Friday that you see on TV might not be listening to this, but on, um, on low days when I need to wake up, perhaps I'm only on three or four hours of sleep. It was Friday. I just wrestled and I'm sore, but I have to wake up to catch a 6am flight. Mm. Um, I put on uh, jazz and I put on miles Davis, love miles Davis. Um, like I said, as I grew up and got older, my my interests in music completely expanded. Um, because I um, was a self-taught musician, I, you may understand this too. And for anyone who, who, who plays an instrument, you can kind of, uh, you have a different appreciation for what you're listening to when you understand how difficult it is to sometimes write and time and pace music. And when I listen to him, he's just like, he's a God <laughs> to me. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's, there's very few people in my mind, in my books that even get near him. Mm. So I, I, I'm Miles Davis in the morning and I drink a, a cup of black coffee and for, I can't explain the process of it. It just puts me in the right place. That's awesome. That's awesome. I listen to Davis on relaxed days or if I have a lot of work and I need to get through it calmly and I'll throw that on and it just kind of zens me into, it puts me in a Zen mode. Uh, but I do have a, a playlist that my wife put together for me whenever I'm having a bad day or she notices that I'm particularly on the edge and angry. And it starts with the thong song from Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> to lighten you up. All right. Man, that song is a masterpiece. I mean, it's got violins. I mean, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but it's songs like that. I have like... Uh, 90s like gypsy woman was one that's in there that i really like uh what else is on there oh uh ain't nobody from chaka khan just stuff to you know the return of the mac stuff that i wouldn't normally listen to usually takes me out of the funk it makes me just kind of laugh and dance and like all right i'm in a good mood now and now i can get back to taking care of business <laughs> i'm digging that i like that yeah uh all right acting goals you know you're an actor uh, according to your Instagram, um, what are some of your goals in that? Would you want to start doing movies more or TV shows? And is there a dream project for you? Uh, I am assessing a short film script right now that I'm really interested in producing. Uh, no one knows this. This is a news break. Um, yes. it's, Headline. it's a short film. It's uh, it's not a film that anyone would probably anticipate me having any sort of involvement with. It's uh, more of a drama piece, and uh, it's an underdog story. And I would really like to produce a film, which I plan on doing. Um, there is a supporting role that the writer is is asking me to take. I'm interested in doing it, um, but it's a total drama piece. It's not an action or anything like that. But in terms of acting goals, I would love to be involved with uh, the Marvel or DC universe. And everyone always wants to pick a side. They want to politic their way into this stuff. I say either or because I grew up on comics. That's what I grew up on. Scary nice. story, comics. And I, I grew up on Batman. And I grew up on uh, Spider-Man, Wolverine, X-Men, all that stuff. And I love that they're doing movies about this stuff now. Because when I was little, they were just comics of this. And after 95, 96, I kind of fell off of comics. But all of the stuff that I read up until that point, maybe like Onslaught, the introduction of Onslaught, I know all that stuff. And now they're doing all the movies, which I think is so awesome. Like I never thought as a little kid I was going to get those films. Now I have them, which is so cool. But yeah. um, being able to work in that universe and bring a character to life for people, maybe like Cyber or a character people haven't seen hit the screens yet. Um, and working with Scorsese or Ridley Scott, I think would be such an honor and a privilege. But you know, for immediate goals, I really like to do this film. And uh, yeah, we're just, uh, we're lining everything up and 
my goal would be to have it ready for the Independent Film Festival Awards. I'm really excited about it. I don't want to talk too much about it because I, I, I want to have all my ducks in a row. Right. But uh, that's the type of stuff I'm thinking. If I was going to get into acting and films and stuff, yeah, action would be a lot of fun. And depending on the script, I'd be interested to do it. But I'm not looking to be like a movie star. I'd like if I was going to approach acting, I'd want to be an actor. I'd want to take on things that, you know, we're telling a story that makes people feel something like you can watch me hold a machine gun and shoot stuff and blow stuff up and ride a motorcycle. And I'm down for all that. But if you're talking to me, like what I might be directly interested in, I'd be interested in drama pieces. So more of the Batista angle, not the rock <laughs> angle. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pattern myself after either of them, even though they're both ultra successful and killing it. I, I have, um, I have I have interests. I'm afraid to say what they are because I don't want to jinx them. But um, yeah, Batista's done some really really cool dramatic pieces and stuff like that. And I love character work. Um, I'd love to get deep into some character stuff. Um, but this this short film that uh, I am interested in producing, I think, is going to be a, a really enjoyable experience for people um, once it's done. Awesome! I'm excited for it. I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to to hopefully seeing it one day. Uh, you mentioned comics and that's a whole other podcast we could do together because you brought up what I would consider my favorite character and not a lot of people bring him up. Everybody brings up, you know, uh, Thanos, which is also one of my favorites. Uh, they'll bring up Apocalypse, but nobody ever brings up Onslaught. Onslaught it, was wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You need a few movies to set that up, though, and you know why. Oh, absolutely. They need to. Well, first, where we're at these days, they need to refresh the X-Men because, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we're all the the weird licensing stuff that happened and back and forths. But uh, if we get the X-Men back on track, then we could start leading into what the, eventually could be Onslaught, because for anybody that's watching, doesn't know what that is. Look it up. It's the brainchild of Magneto and Charles Xavier's consciousness becoming a form. And he basically kills everyone at one point <laughs> at some point you know and i think they after that they just restarted the series they're like i guess we killed everyone must re refresh <laughs> uh but that's really cool man i i also grew up on comics and and similarly fell off after around that time period i think it's just because of the our age i think we started developing new interests uh mm -hmm. like like the opposite sex and or same sex you know i mean it doesn't matter but you start looking at partners and people and like hmm life is different <laughs> you know or uh, um okay and then my last question for you how do you manage anxiety and stress uh before going out there into a arena full of people because i know you know, I, I've performed numerous times and there's always that right before you hit the stage, there's a lot of like anxiety, stomach and in your head. And you're trying to make sure you remember your, you know, what you're saying, what you're going to say and what you're going to do. Uh, what do you do in order to curb that? And do you also like one thing that happens to me once the lights are on, once I'm out there, it's fine. I kind of black out and everything goes according to plan. But uh, but there's always that. Does, does that happen to you as well? It used to happen to me when I first started uh, wrestling, and then I began to develop a philosophy to deal with that, which is basically to prepare for every single thing to go wrong. I literally prepare for every single thing to go wrong before I go out there, and I have an exit plan, and I have a backup plan, how to deal with everything that could go sideways. Because there's a, there's a secret, there's a key to life that a lot of people don't figure out until you know perhaps it's too late which is uh, things can go wrong. And the only thing that you're afraid of is something going wrong. If you're totally confident that you can pull off whatever it is that the task at hand is, you will approach things with confidence and you won't be scared. But if you don't know what to do, if something goes wrong, that will be what you're actually afraid of is being able to identify what you're actually scared of. And I learned that from jujitsu. When you're mm. getting a bad position, maybe on bottom and you're getting smashed, if you don't know your escapes or your reversals or your counters, um, it's not going to be a good day for you. So just prepare for the worst and you will not be afraid of anything. You will approach everything with confidence and you'll execute exactly how you plan to the exact way you visualized how to do it. 
Excellent. Yeah, I mean, I try to do that. I, I, I'm, you know, I prepare. I do stand up as well, and and you know, I used to be in a band, so I always prepare before the show. But there's always like two minutes. I'm like, uh oh, and that's when everything just kind of I start sweating. Like, oh, okay, it's go time, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, there's a lot of stand up comedians prepare, 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 and then blank bomb on the first attempt on the mic you know <laughs> so it's a it's a rough one it's a, it takes a lot of practice for sure i've been very fortunate i've had a lot of uh practice being in high pressure situations and now i'm kind of addicted to them as mm. weird as that may i kind of love it um because every time i succeed my confidence under that type of pressure goes to the roof and then i'm looking for a new pressure which is also pretty bad <laughs> but i mean <laughs> it's just the way i am and i just accepted it you know awesome man well hey i'll let you go uh people that are watching and listening please follow at is it real yes real killer cross on instagram is that your primary uh i kept it the same across the board so it didn't get complicated same for twitter same for instagram and killercross.com for a little bit of everything a little bit of everything are you ever going to do stand-up comedy I thought about that too, man. I, I seriously, I, people have told me I should do it, but I don't have a passion for it. I know a lot of work goes into it. So I'm just focusing on what I'm doing right now. Okay. You know, I can, I can see the structure of it and how it's similar to wrestling. I just, a, you know, somebody in the audience who enjoys it. And I plan on staying there. <laughs> okay. Okay. So please, please follow at real killer cross on all of the things. Please watch you're on SmackDown. So that's why I chose blue. Um, you WWE SmackDown every Friday on Fox for now, I think. There's it on USA. I forget these things. I don't. I'll kill you, dude. I'll break your neck. <laughs> on Fox uh, for now, I think. I, I think there's new deals being talked about. I don't know if Netflix. Netflix got raw, I think, right? Yes. Netflix got raw. I, we don't, we, you have we, those raw guys. I don't talk to them. Enough, my uh, friends. <laughs> yeah, I think raw's on, on Netflix, but I think. Is SmackDown going to uh, USA? I forget where they're going. I can't tell you that. If I tell you that, I have to kill you. We can just go back to this whole kill thing. <laughs> uh, but it's SmackDown is Fox affiliate. Okay. SmackDown on Fox. Watch it every Friday. And, uh, yeah, dude, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And hopefully, if you're ever in L.A. and want to hit the comedy store, I can get you in there. That's uh, where I got my start doing the Comedy Store Wrestling podcast there. And uh, so if anytime you're in town, you want to go, let me know. Hit me up. I a thousand percent will hit you up for that. I would love to do that. So thank you. Absolutely. All right, guys. Cheers.